Hey guys, so two episodes ago, I talked about a comment that I got where the devs were saying, hey, we want to balance the game, help us, you know, work towards balancing the game. And I created this formula in that video where we kind of talked about that balance updates are more affecting the fun level and there's other things the devs need to be focusing on. Um, but that is what they asked. They didn't ask about those other things. And in the last episode, I talked about, well, really, we need to work on balancing the weapons first okay the weapons and items need to be factored in and balanced um one thing i forgot to mention in that video is that last time we did a balance update with weapons uh they changed the armor potion which is giving it a place in the game um several times people will use an armor potion to fight against like a mage or someone with a um, certain high dps you're trying to reduce it for a, a split second um it's pretty clever tactic it gave the armor potion a use when it didn't really have a use before that so um uh, but in this video we're going to talk about all of the different classes um and and basically the devs are considering balancing uh the game which is great i love that the devs are thinking about balancing the game um unfortunately devs just so you know i don't feel super qualified to um do this part for two reasons one um i don't play with a uh, level four class so that's gonna make it hard i see people i i get a lot of i i know a lot about frostborn i've seen this i've heard the stories i watch uh, what other people are doing um so i am somewhat knowledgeable but experientially i'm not as experienced with four with level four classes, and I definitely don't have um, an understanding of runes at its max level, right? Like an assassin with plus 40% damage to players, or a druid with plus 75% health. I don't know what it's like to PvP in that context, and so there are gonna be some things that really, yeah, I can't foresee. But I, I can predict a lot of things, and so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the Berserk is um, a great PvE class. It is used often in PvE. I don't, necess I don't know that it necessarily needs a big buff, um, but if you want to see it in PvP, um, it does need some kind of buff. I think the easiest way to buff the Berserk and give it a way that, that is in line with what it already does is to increase how much resistant it is from ranged weapons to like 30 uh 30 percent uh, maybe even 35 percent um make it to where it is a counter it is the one melee character who is going to be better at at you know basically when an archer says oh it's a berserk they're going to be like oh man i'm doing so much less damage if you didn't watch my last video where i talk about the fire bow that kind of has ruined a lot of this because the fire bow does so much damage and the berserk's like well i can't i'm not reducing that damage so it's i still get melted so um do you need to factor in the fire bow again i that's why i made that other video first it's more important to talk about weapons because when you change the weapons but if you change if you make the change that i suggested for the fire bow um and you reduce the weapons by like range weapons by like make it up to like 30 percent um then i think that the berserk will have a better place it also will make the berserk even better at pve in the in the area that i don't think it'll be too op like if you're going up against sharpshooters and odins that's the perfect place for the berserk anyways i think it's going to make the berserk even better but i i think you'll just give it more of a place so the berserk is underutilized i definitely think it needs to be buffed the Ice Mage is, and I've told you guys this before, and you haven't made the change, so I'm not sure why, if y'all have are thinking of something. Um, but in my opinion, the Ice Mage is the worst. No one uses it in PvE. Very few people use it in, in at all. <laughs> it's just not used a whole lot. Um, so I think the Ice Mage deserves a big buff. I hope y'all guys consider it. The way that I would want you guys to do that is um, double the size, uh, the width, or at least by increase by 50% the width of the ice path. 
uh, make it just really good initiation tool make it easy to catch at least one person um, and and that's it uh, I would say that would make a big difference it would make it easier to get that initial hit you don't want to get it too OP you know people because if you leave any chink of like something someone can really manipulate something they're gonna you know they're gonna find a way to and then you're gonna have an ice mage that's untouchable um, but I think increasing its width and then uh, decreasing its cooldown I would do maybe even by like 40 per I, I'd make the cooldown like 30 seconds honestly I I maybe I'll know something I don't know well maybe 30 seconds to 40 seconds reduce it by 15 um, and then make it a little bit wider but at least 50% wider you catch more people uh, with it that I think that will be enough to get the ice mage into action but if not then buff it again you know one thing that I really hope you guys consider devs is that um, balance changes are best made in small increments okay like in and like a little bit here a little bit there we we tweak this one class we then you feel how it goes you know but you're doing it like each update you like if y'all committed to we're going to have a balance change every update then I think that and that just becomes part of the frostborn culture I think that's gonna be the best way to implement it it's not it's gonna make people realize like oh yeah there could be a balance update uh, at any time um, there's usually gonna be at least one thing that people are like this is the big one that needs to be changed and in this case and what it has been for months is the ice mage the ice mage is the lowest um, I would really work on that Pathfinder has a place uh, in PvE it has a place in PvP uh, in team PvP um, it's great. The healer has a great place. Yeah, I, I don't think they need to be changed at all. The rogue uh, is has a great place in PVE. Um, the sharpshooter is good. I, honestly, I think, again, I don't know uh, what the changes will be in a level 4 element, but I would say um, they're, they're pretty good as they are right now. If you guys reduce the fire bow the way that I suggest in that last video, it, it's not much, but it'll be enough to make the sharpshooter even um, even more balanced because it'll, it'll still have the damage. You're still increasing that damage, but you're not making the fire bow um, so ridiculous that being able to keep people stunned constantly is just gonna um, mess them up. The fire mage uh, feels OP uh, to most people. Uh, I would say, I, I I get more. It's gets used more than anything in both PVE and PVP. Um, honestly, I kind of like how it is though. Um, it it's good DPS. It's got a very clear role. Um, I and, and it's got very low health. You know, plus five health um, is pretty low in the increase it's gonna be once you get to that level four it's just such low health but it also does um crazy damage so i don't know uh the fire mage i think needs to be nerfed but i'm not exactly sure how to nerf it uh you know one thing you could do is you could make it to where it adds zero health or it even has negative health you like the higher level fire mage you get like a fire mage four reduces health by 15 health you know and that's gonna be um make it to where it becomes more and more of a glass cannon um easier and easier for a um an assassin to you know evaporate it which the assassin is the best counter to a fire mage um but a good fire mage can still take out an assassin so um yeah, I would say the Fire Mage needs to be nerfed. Um, the Bandit seems good. Uh, people still aren't using it, but that, that's the part of the problem that I'm having right now. A lot of, I'm not into the like really intense Frostborn, and there's not as many people that are into like the really intense four person versus four person. Both teams are like really vying for like that position of being the best. This is not happening as much anymore. And so it makes it really hard I think the bandit would be good 
in that context. But um, honestly, I, if you guys have not seen my video two episodes ago where I, I talk about that, um, this right here, um, I think a lot of us have given up on the idea that Frostborn's ever going to become that epic PvP game that we thought it was going to become because y'all never talk about the arena. Like, y'all don't really say that's in your plans at all. And it just feels like the only PvP there is going to be out there is the random encounters when we're not in a bot zone. And that, and that just... I, honestly, it just—it's just too random. It's too random. It's too sparse. It makes it hard to really coordinate PvP. And the fact that you have so many bot zones—I mean, I hear over and over again, devs. Please hear me when I say this. I hear over and over and over again of these Frostborn YouTubers or these Frostborn uh, Discord leader group leaders you know and they come to me over and over and over again saying yeah i tried to play in a tournament and it was just a circus trying to match the right people in the right zones we just could not match people in the zones to do a tournament if you are not going to add an arena then at least fix the zones to where people that are trying to create content for the game if you're not going to create content for your game in the PvP area, then at least don't sabotage the people that are willing to create the PvP content for your game and host these amazing tournaments. The fact that they are struggling to be able to match people in the right zones is ridiculous. And I don't know if y'all fix it since the day that I, you know, I got 40 people online and I said, uh, you know, someone's going to give you a hundred bucks if you kill me like legit it was like he a legit wager and um 40 people were trying to get me in zones and i still ran into bot zones i i and we like matched um gear level and timing and everything and they could not match with us so there is an issue there so i don't know why you would even be focusing on balancing the game if you don't if you're not planning on adding a way for us to actually PvP. But if this is a balance update in preparation for an arena, oh my gosh, I love you guys so much. I've been wanting that. I've been wanting that since last day on Earth. That is where I think Frostborn will experience the biggest boost. But yeah, I, I'm like I said, I just feel like I've been giving up. Okay, next I have a kind of a more controversial... Uh, one um and that is that a shield increases its you all make the block damage on a shield increase a little bit okay uh, because right now the only people that use shields mostly are protectors okay so you increase the amount of healing that or of of blocking um that a protector that a shield does and then instead of making a shield block three times as much more effectively um, for just generically protector one, which because the protector one is OP compared to all the other classes and the protector four is, you know, it just has a lot of hit points, which is awesome. Uh, and it's always been strong, but it's not. So basically what I would suggest is doubling maybe let's say uh, yeah let's say double the shield double the shield that's probably too much increase the shield by 50 percent and then make it to where the protector one gets a additional 50 percent bonus okay that's not making the protector one that much stronger but honestly i think that that will actually just balance the level one classes because right now the protector one is the strongest level one class in the game i could beat anyone uh as a protector one with a nord sword and shield against anyone else any other level one class i'll win um because just the nature of the nord sword and shield if they're also a level one class um it's just op so increase it by 50 percent and then 50 percent and then 50 percent and 50 percent something like that so that you're going to end up with at level four you're going to end up with 3.5 percent so that's a little bit more than it is right now. 
but that's the that is the benefit of a protector it's hard to kill and i think that it should be hard to kill um so that's my opinion on the protector but other than that i'd say the protectors i mean the protector has always been kind of a staple of frostborn it's beautiful i think that there should be more more classes out there that can be as tanky as a protector i think even the druid struggles to be as tanky as a protector but maybe that will change with this new the runes aspect of the game okay so the hunter's good i think that um the hunter with the current fire bow is a pretty sweet deal i'm i'm really curious with runes if someone went all health on a hunter and used the fire bow and if they could just you know basically <laughs> have like 600 health uh, as a ranged character with the fire bow and just i don't know how effective that would be but i, I i'm really curious to see if it would be effective you know you'd have to commit to becoming a level four hunter just for the experiment um the sorcerer i think that y'all did an amazing job of of creating an amazing class with the sorcerer i mean the 50 percent extra damage to players with its buff reduce f damage by 50 percent is those are insane numbers those are yeah those are awesome numbers um I just Frostborn PvP died when people lost hope in an arena. They thought, oh, that, what's the point of doing all of this work? You know, even to get a level three class, people were not motivated to become a level three sorcerer and go at it in PvP um, because people were f leaving the game so often. It was hard to get a team. It, it just was it was gonna be hard to get those mastery points. And so I just feel like this class hasn't really been tested um, yet. I think that it, it, I think that if there was a team that was really committed to it, that they could have a, a level four, like a, a, a sorcerer dynamic within a team would just absolutely dominate. I was surprised that even before y'all made that balance change with the 20% that we were able to take out some teams. If you guys have not seen the Sorcerer PvP, that was before they made the balance change. And we took out some teams with healers, some decent teams with healers, and it was a fantastic episode. It was probably my favorite. I thought I was throwing away weapons by being a Sorcerer uh, and with my team, but we actually ended up um, pretty... I mean, we dominated quite a bit, and it was it was pretty fantastic. Okay, the Thrasher, again, the last balance update, y'all did an amazing job with the Thrasher. I, there are lots of people play Thrasher. It doesn't, sometimes there'll be a person who people are like, oh, the Thrasher's OP, but then there'll be another Thrasher that just sucks. And so I think y'all did a pretty good job of balancing the Thrasher um so yeah i'm i'm good with the thrasher same thing with the shaman i feel like y'all balanced it pretty well um it is it is being used now which is good um yeah and honestly if y'all are willing to give me you know to give some of us a test of some of these higher level classes we could test it a little bit better but from what we know right now i would say uh, the shaman, I can't really give you that great of a suggestion. If you were going to change the shaman, I would buff it just a little bit. But I don't know if you really need to. People do play the shaman now, which is amazing. Um, the assassin, people complain about the assassin a lot. Um, personally, I think um, I think people under, mis, misunderstand the point of the assassin. The point of the assassin is that that you know you evaporate someone and but then after you do your burst you're gonna die if you don't succeed you're dead and that's that's a beautiful thing about an assassin the fact that assassin is so good in solo pvp and not good in team pvp makes me think y'all have done a good job with the assassin it's the point of the assassin is that you'll get demolished if you're not clever about it so i think it's great um but I will say this, that if an assassin is able to kill a protector uh, pretty easily, 
Um, or even a Thrasher. I think the Thrasher should beat the Assassin. And so if y'all have it set up to where the Thrasher can't beat the Assassin, then I would nerf. Then I would nerf the Assassin. And I wish I could tell you, oh yeah, it is, but again, I it's so hard to have even fights that I can't really tell you whether or not it is actually in balance. People complain about the Assassin a lot, I can tell you that. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's OP. Um, but I bet, I bet it is. I bet it is. Um, but again, last video I talked about nerfing the dagger and that might be the better approach, nerfing the dagger rather than nerfing the class. Uh, the Druid was great when back when I played as a team. Again, the Druid is a team player and the Druid, I don't see a lot of team PvP as much anymore. And so that, um, I think that the Druid is amazing though. It is the closest thing to a tank as the protector, but then it also has that team dispel, which is just really powerful. And now with runes, it can get up to 800 health, which is pretty fantastic. Um, the illusionist, I'd say buff it just a little bit, buff it just a little bit, make it to where the illusionist is feared in PVP and it's not, I mean, I, you fear the fire mage probably even more than the illusionist right now. And I think that needs to change. I think the illusionist needs to be, I mean, if you're going to make its class skill plus 20% to players, then, then you need to make it a, a, a class that people say oh, this is a PvP class. I think it needs to be just a slight advantage over the Fire Mage. You can do that by either nerfing the Fire Mage, which I think there's there are some ways you can do that, making it, I talked about making it more of a glass cannon, um, but you could also just uh, reduce its cooldown. Um, yeah, I'd say reduce its cooldown. The, the Illusionist is fun to play. And so if you reduce its cooldown, let's say you half its cooldown even if you halved its cooldown uh, they're both one minute even if you halved its cooldown and did the suggestion i made on the J dragon staff where you halved you made that staff half their cooldown um with a sacrifice of 10 dps a second um then you're looking at um you know you can do this every 15 seconds which would be so fun to be able to do that but you'd be losing some of that um, DPS, but it would it would make the Illusionist really fun to play. Um, your magic doubles would be up for six seconds, so you'd basically have your magic doubles up a third of the time. That might be a little too OP. Maybe you can't reduce its cooldowns by 50% and use the staff to reduce it by 50%, so maybe just do like one by 25% and one by 50%. That might, but you guys run the numbers, right? I, mean, I think the Illusionist should be buffed and the way to do that in my opinion is to reduce its cooldowns because the illusionist would be a lot of fun to be able to just jump around and it, it people would see it and be like oh i want to i want that class that class is fun to play um the argument is great it's fantastic uh well done um it for for team pvp it's not that great for solo pvp which is great it has a place that's, that's all you can ask for, is that every class would have a place um, that can be used, but not be so powerful that it's used in everything. Solo PvP, PvE, team PvP, uh, it's used in everything. Uh, the Witch Doctor, uh, you know, it was OP. Then y'all nerfed the flask, and it was too weak. And now y'all have buffed the flask, and so I think it's probably great. Um, but I haven't really played with it a whole lot yet. And so I'd, I'd want to go play with it and, and get a feel for it now that y'all you know, just recently buffed the class in this last update. So, um, I just don't know yet, um, whether or not my guess is that these classes don't touch right now. Um, and, um, and the alchemist y'all buffed a lot. Uh, the seven second throw is good. If you ever do need to buff the alchemist, I would say increasing this long throw even more. Doing the seven seconds was great. Maybe go up to 10 seconds, but I don't do that if it's OP, which some people think the alchemist is OP now with the buff, with y'all buffing it and buffing the flasks. Um, it has become 
really powerful. And if that is true, then obviously don't buff it. Um, if you're going to nerf the alchemist, um, well, I guess it depends how the alchemist is OP. If, if the alchemist is like, I can never kill it, then you know, get, get rid of its getaway. Uh, but honestly, I don't, people say the alchemist is OP and maybe that's true. But I, I want to see it for myself before I actually believe it. Um, because I have a feeling that the things that people think the alchemist is OP is really that the flasks are OP. And so really it's hard to say. I don't know if the if they truly are OP, which I don't I'm not convinced they are, then I would we'd have to decide, you know, well really is the witch doctor and the alchemist OP? Are they both OP together? Then nerf the flasks. And if they're not, then um, then then you're going to nerf which class. And, and I guess it would probably be the slowdown that you would need to nerf on the alchemist if the alchemist was too OP. That way, it give, give a chance for people to get away a little bit better, get rid of some of those stacks. Um, and and so that and recover a little bit that might be the best way to nerf the alchemist but i don't i'm not convinced that it, they actually are op so that is all of the classes one more thing that i i wanted to mention um that i think that you guys should consider as you are um you know doing all of this is i think that every season should have a class and if you guys don't, I mean, I don't, I don't think you should add a class every single season. So take some of the old classes and put that in here. And personally, I think y'all should add level four classes. I realize that's not in line with what I think y'all want to do. But even if you add level three classes, it's still going to be meaningful. You add a, a level three berserk in there, you know. Oh, we just buffed the ice mage. Now you can get it for in the season like that is going to be really exciting oh i want to get level three ice mage i want to get level three on all the classes i'm gonna that would be 18 seasons that's like over a year it's still a really long time but it gives people that motivation to finish the season unlock that class they don't have to grind for those mastery points they're grinding for the season um so that would be my suggestion for you guys um, and then as we get more level three classes in the world of Frostborn, then we'll be able to see. Um, now, the discouragement part of that is that they might only do the season. They might not ever grind for master points anymore. Or they'll, well, actually, that's not true. They'll probably save all of their master points for level four classes, which honestly is still a butt ton of master points. So um, I, think it's a, I think it's a win type of situation. You guys get people grinding in the season and you get player involvement and they get that class. Uh, it gives a huge reward to free-to-play players. Um, so I think it's worth worth considering. Um, but that's it for the balance changes. Um, I'm really curious why y'all are wanting balance changes. Um, it, could that mean that y'all are thinking about actually adding an arena? If so, oh, Please tell me so that I, I mean, I won't, if you tell me and you tell me to keep it secret, I'll keep it secret. Um, but it will encourage me so much because that is what I've been wanting for Frostborn. Um, pretty, pretty much since the beginning. So that would be really exciting. Um, but there it is. That's the, what y'all were asking. I realize now that, um, you know, a balance change that, that might come in handy and maybe my next video will be balancing the different runes in the game. All right, guys. I'll see you next time.